We're going to be talking about chemistry, which is like my favorite thing. I don't know how far we'll get into it, but we'll, we'll find out. Heart, because it's fun. Let's start with the basic. The basic? The basics. There's more than one. What is chemistry? Chemistry is when two people vibe. That is actually very accurate. Chemistry is, let's put it this way, it's the study of matter. What matters? And the smallest form of matter is our atom. Up an atom. So chemistry is the study of matter. The smallest form of matter is our atom. Our atom is made up of, well, it goes deeper when we get into like quantum physics, but we're just gonna talk about, we're just gonna talk about the basic three. We've got our neutrons, our protons, and our electrons. So inside of the middle of our atom, we have our protons and our neutrons. Kind of like that. There's chemistry between two humans. And you know what? Chemistry between elements is kind of similar to between chemistry between hu two humans. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. So our protons are going to be positively uh, charged particles. So our protons are positive. Our neutrons Did I spell neutron right? Yeah, probably. Neutrons are neutral. I'm just gonna, yeah. And then floating around the outside of our nucleus, we have electrons. Do, 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 do. And electrons have a negative charge. On our periodic table of elements, you'll see a bunch of shenanigans like a ton of shenanigans like what's going on here so we've got this guy over here hydrogen and you'll see one in this corner so let's uh let me draw this real fast so this one will be our atomic number and our atomic number relates to our atom because the atomic number will actually tell you how many protons are going to be in this atom. So hydrogen will have one proton. Yeah, when you look at the periodic table of elements and you see the atomic number in the corner, that's the amount of protons that are going to be in the atom of that particular atom. Hydrogen will have one proton and usually Usually it'll also have uh, one electron as well. So if you were to see, like if it has a charge on it, it becomes what's called an ion. So um, ions are when an element either gains or loses an electron. So you can have a positive ion, which will be a cation. And to remember cation, you can think of paws, because it's a cat. We got a cat, and it's got paws, and that makes it positive. So our cations are positive, positively charged ions. When it's gaining an electron, it becomes negative. When it when it's uh when it loses this electron, it becomes positive. So when it is n negatively charged, that's gonna be an an ion. So when it loses an electron, it becomes a cation. Yes. So when it loses an electron, that creates it to be, that creates it, that causes it to be positively charged. Positive. You be positive. Yeah. So cations are positive. Anions, they're negative. Negative Nancy's. Negative Ann's. Maybe I'm jumping too far ahead with the ion part. Let me, uh, let, let, let's back it up a little. Okay, so we got our, we got our protons, our neutrons, our electrons. Chemistry, like, I'm, like I said before, it's the study of matter. And also, kind of, it's the study of how, like, the matter or the atoms kind of interact with each other. 
Does everyone understand the uh, the the atom concept? This one's really simple, I think, but I want to make sure you think the same. The electrons they kind of go around our nucleus, but they don't really go around like kind of like they don't go around it like a planet. They actually are going so fast, and it's kind of like a three D sphere. So they're going around it so fast and so randomly. Um, it kind of creates almost like a blur. Like, think if you wave your hand super fast. This thing is going so fast around our nucleus that it, it almost looks like a cloud. It's just... If the atomic number is the number of protons, how do we get the number of neutrons in it? Oh, that's a great question. Okay, so right here, if we look at, like, carbon, for example. So carbon is 6. Right down here, there's a number underneath carbon, and it has, um, it's 12.011. And this number right here is our atomic mass. So our atomic mass, um, our atomic mass is kind of the overall weight of our, because think of it, this has a weight to it. So in order to find our neutrons in here, you're gonna take the atomic mass and you're gonna minus the atomic number. So we're gonna take 12, uh, this is the average by the way, I should explain that. So this is the average. So what they did is they took all of the numbers of carbon, so all of the elements of carbon and all of their different weights and masses and then they averaged it out. So this one is the average. But if we were to take carbon 12, or what's the popular one, like carbon 14? So if you were to take carbon 14, so 14 carbon six, so it looks kind of like this. If you were to take that, um, you minus the, from the atomic mass, that's our mass, you minus the amount, the atomic number, and then that will give us our protons, or sorry, our neutrons, our neutrons. Our protons will always, always be six. So we're going to minus that from that, and that's going to give us 8. Right? Did I do math right? 6 plus 6 is 12. <laughs> 12? Yeah, 8. So this will be how many neutrons will be in our atom. If you do, if you do carbon 12, you minus 6, then you're going to have 6 neutrons. Does that make sense? It's really easy. That's how we get our number of neutrons. And then our number of um, electrons is most likely going to be six in a neutral state. So I mentioned this before, but you can have like a positively charged carbon or a negatively charged carbon. And the way to get those negative and positives is if you lose electrons. So your protons are always going to be six. Six is what makes it carbon. If there's seven protons, then it's gonna be uh, nitrogen, and then it's no longer carbon. We have our neutrons, our protons, our protons and our electrons. There, within chemistry, there are certain types of bonds as well. Covalent bonds and ionic bonds. So, let me talk about those real fast. We might not understand it fully right away, but I'm gonna try my best to explain it. Okay, so we're gonna talk about bonds. They're covalent bonds which I can spell, hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at chat because you spelled covalent and I'm gonna copy it so that I don't look dumb. Ha ha, <laughs> covalent, covalent bonds and ionic bonds. And then you have your James bonds. I'm just kidding. <laughs> James Bond isn't a part of this. What's his elemental number? 007? <laughs> oh, you know what I didn't mention? Hold up, hold up, hold up. There's something that's quite important in chemistry. So, a molecule. So, a molecule is a bond between one or more atoms. Or, one or more atoms. Two or more atoms. So, you have your atom, and then when you get two atoms together, that's our molecule. So a covalent bond is when two or more atom or two or more atoms kind of share an electron. So a bond is um is it's a marriage. 
Princess Bride, Newage. One covalent bond that's extremely popular is water. Our boy, water. We got our oxygen right here, right? Oxygen, he's got, he's got eight protons. So we got our oxygen right here. Um, and oxygen, he's kind of, I don't know, he's kind of a Chad. Chad oxygen. And at school, he's got some fangirls. And his fangirls are hydrogen. And hydrogen only has one electron. So, so Chad over here, he's got, he's got eight electrons over here in his orbit. He's got two in his inner orbit. There's always two in the inner orbit and then out eight in the second orbit. So these little fangirl hydrogens kind of see oxygen and is like, oh my gosh, he's so cool. I want to share my electron with him. So they want to, um, cause he's missing. So oxygen right here is missing two electrons that could go right here and right here. So this hydrogen will give, she'll give him an electron and she'll give him an electron. And then they kind of all hang out together. They are, they kind of like, it's kind of like a, an equal give or take. Sometimes he'll give it back. Sometimes she'll give it back. They're, they're playing catch. They're like, got it, got it. And then back and forth. So they're just sharing these two. He's sharing one with the, uh, this hydrogen and one with this hydrogen so that he has a complete shell right here. Oxygen right here has two hydrogen fangirls and they're sharing their electrons with him so that he can have a complete outer shell. Ionic bonds are, like I said, they're more of a give or take. Like I'm gonna take your electrons or I'll give you electrons. Not so much sharing. Not so much like, oh, we'll share these electrons. It's more so, give me that electron. And these ones can be, ionic bonds can get to the point where they can be quite volatile. These metals over here, they're not very complete. They always have an extra electron kind of like orbiting. They like to stick to other things a lot. I didn't really talk about this, did I? So this periodic table of elements that I have is kind of color coded. So like these ones over here on this end, they're, they usually have very complete shells. So there's like kind of multiple levels of shells. In your first shell, there's always two electrons. These two electrons are, like I, I mentioned this before, but they are so close and so um, tightly bound to our nucleus that they're really hard to separate. They're really strong. Their connection is really, really, really strong. In our second shell, there's gonna be eight. 